What's up, Stogie Geeks listeners? Joe Hosempa here, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood, a.k.a. The Italian Styling, telling you about a little giveaway that we have going on. We've teamed up with our sponsor, J.C. Newman, this year to give back to the Stogie Geeks listener. They've been such an awesome partner so far. They've decided to give away one Diamond Crown humidor per quarter to the winner that they choose. All you got to do is log on to stogiegeeks.com forward slash diamond crown. Click on the enter to win button. It's really that easy. So if you're smart and you want an awesome humidor for your home collection, go to our website, stogiegeeks.com. Find that banner ad right on top. Click on it and register to win that humidor. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, episode 302, volume 2. I can't wait to introduce our host. It has been a journey. I'm sorry. I can't wait to introduce our guest. It has been a journey. Getting him here via Zoom. We have internationally acclaimed cigar and spirits author and authority, Richard Carlton Hacker. Richard, welcome to the show. Joe, thanks. It's good to be here. I, good I to be there. <laughs> yeah. I cannot express to the Story Geeks listeners the amount of technical knowledge. Richard is ready to start his own cybersecurity company after his journey of, of <laughs> connecting with us via, via Zoom, uh, for sure. <laughs> yep. Richard, it's a privilege. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, talk to uh, Johnny and myself today. Also, our our remote partners down in Texas, we have Jeff and Drew. Gentlemen, I'm looking forward to this interview. Uh, we are going to chat about this book right here. Richard wrote a book, super cool book, awesome journey. It is titled The Ultimate Cigar Book. It's in its fourth edition. You can check that out over on Amazon. And if that wasn't super cool enough, he also wrote another book. It's called The Connoisseur's Guide to Worldwide Spirits. It's pretty thick. It's super cool. Bunch of stuff. And if that was not enough, Richard wrote other books that we can uh, certainly not get a chance to talk about. But he's written some more books, too, which when I threw him into the Google machine, um, awesome repertoire. So uh, if you throw in Richard Carlton Hacker, you can check out the book. We're going to take a, a time out of our... Oh, the Amazon link is in the show notes. Storygeeks.com forward slash 302. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Joe Hozempa, J-O-E-H-O-Z-E-M-P-A. And also, uh, any email, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. We are pairing uh, today's cigar while we speak to Richard with... Uh, Johnny, how do you pronounce that? So that's going to be... Uh, Ardbeg. Uh, Ardbeg, yep. All yeah, right. It's the, uh, uh, an Islay yeah. single malt scotch whiskey, guaranteed 10 years old. Uh, we already poured it. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm loving it so far. <laughs> we, we poured it as we were connecting Richard to Zoom. Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> we didn't know if that was going to be able to happen. Richard, welcome to the show. How are you? Thanks, Joe. It's great. And, you know, i got to say, thanks to you, I now have electricity in my house. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 oh, we never had it before. Yeah. And uh, now now I've got it. So, And I've got a bottle here, but I, I'm going to wait until uh, the sun goes down. It's art big, and, uh, and it comes from Isla, as you said. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's the smokiest of all the yard bags, they yeah. uh, they make a number of uh, different uh, whiskeys. All of them on Isla, all of them smoky, but this is the smokiest. Awesome, mm. awesome. Now uh, you, you wrote several books, right? And right. I mean, we we only have you for an hour here, so uh, you know, I I, I want to uh, start. I was taking the time out to speak to uh, uh, Johnny and Jeff. And Drew about you know about the interview right and 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 where are we gonna go with with this interview I mean uh, Jeff uh, had uh, has your book uh, down in Texas as well I've had Bless the opportunity you. I've had the opportunity uh, to uh, start your incredible journey and story of your book and um, I didn't get to to the spirits one however. Uh, other than Stogie Geeks, uh, we do uh, several other podcasts in cybersecurity as well. 
Um, this is one of those books that I'm sure that they will be making reference to, and because they all we all know that they love their cocktails and cigars sure. on Paul S- Security Weekly yeah. and the SecurityWeekly.com network. Yep. So, Richard, I guess the question: Take you your book was first published in 1993. Um, right. Different cigar world then, different technological cigar world meaning we now have access to the internet and social media and all this stuff um so i guess the best place to start is when you decided to write this book take us through your initial journey and how you got started with that well obviously started with me smoking cigars that's what i was doing in college and uh uh, I started out smoking Robert Burns cigarillos. I think they were 10 cents a piece. That was all I could afford. Sure. And uh, uh, then I gravitated up to, uh, it's funny you remember these things, uh, A&C, Anthony and Cleopatra Grenadiers, uh, nice green candela wrapper. Mm. Uh, then, uh, not to date myself, but uh, uh, the Cuban embargo hit. And uh, I had never smoked a Cuban cigar. You couldn't get them. They're too expensive for, for me, for sure, in college. Good God. Uh, I mean, I pick them off the street. Not, not that bad. But no, I couldn't smoke them. Um, <laughs> and then I saw, um, I stopped in a tobacco shop, and they had Oyo de Monterey made in Honduras. Mm-hmm. But it said, this was like 1965, I think, so you couldn't get any more Cuban cigars here in, in America. Uh, the only country in the world, by the way, where you still can't get Cuban product. That's another story. Anyhow, yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it, go figure. It's set on the lid, made with real Havana tobacco. It's, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I bought one. I think it was, um, you know, maybe it's like five, ten dollars. There wasn't ten bucks. It was like at least five bucks. A lot of money for me then. I'm in school. A lot of money. And, uh, I smoked that cigar on a Friday night and it changed my world. And I formed the philosophy I've kept to this day. I'd rather smoke one good cigar a week than seven bad ones a week. And (laughs) I've done that. And then I found out as I went on in my life and I got to know the people and the company and the cigar makers, when they said made with real Havana leaf, the company that made that cigar actually had bales of Havana tobacco that they put away. And they took a leaf and put it in the filler with all the other Honduran. T- so it wasn't lying. It was real. But it was made with real Havana. You could barely, barely, barely taste it. Anyhow, that started me uh, asking questions, meeting people. Uh, I went on in my life. I've been writing all my life, literally. I've been a writer since I've been published since I was 17. And um, writers don't make money typically. But I found out if I got into advertising and marketing, I could write and still make money <laughs> through that through that i connected with a tinderbox international which at that time was the largest tobacco chain in the country mm-hmm. in 148 stores and uh i became their pr consultant and i'm still writing now i'm writing about but now i'm writing more about cigars because i'm finding out more about cigars and uh and it's a parallel with the whiskeys too and anyhow through my contacts with the Tinderbox. I met uh, San Fuentes, Ramon San Fuentes. I met uh, the Fuente family. I met uh, all the people of General Cigar. I began traveling there, began going to Cuba, Honduras, Nicaragua. And then the real turning point came in 1989. Because uh, you probably know, Joe, I used to write for Playboy magazine. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did an article called Up in Smoke. Mm. Because I had noticed a change with the cigar smokers. This is right before the boom in 92, 93. The yep. change in cigar smokers, you're seeing younger guys. They're smoking basically what I was smoking, more expensive cigars, better cigars. Um, and, and, and the whole thing was changed. The big, you know, the big fat guy, you know, with his big wall. That, that, that was gone. Now you got young, young guys who are pretty hip. And they're doing cigars. They're doing cigars. And so I said, boy, there's a change. So I wrote this thing called Up and Smoke about this revolution in cigar smoking that I saw happening in America. I got more letters from that than anything I had done. And I knew something was up. And I started looking for books. Well, 
but you said there was no internet back then. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, what do you do? And even today, you know, I bump into people that I do these smokers, I do seminars, and oh, you just went on the internet and got this information. No, you don't understand. They didn't have laptops, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have Amazon, they had nothing. So you couldn't even do book research because the only book out there was the Zeno Davidoff's book. And that was way, way, way outdated and totally focused on Cuban cigars. Right. So I began going to all these countries and I, I was raised in Arizona. So I, I speak just enough Spanish or, you know, they wouldn't uh, take me out. You know, they wouldn't you know, <laughs> shoot me. Uh, <laughs> and I started, I went to the fields, <clears throat> excuse me. I went to the fields, went to the factories, um, they actually showed me how to make cigars, which uh, convinced me this would not be my life ambition. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather smoke them and let somebody else make them who knew what they were doing. Sure. But it gave me a good you know, sense of what was happening. And, uh, and yeah, I just began finding out more and more information, and I began writing more. And, of course, the more you know, the more you want to know. You, you know you, I always tell people, the day you think you know it all, that's the day to get out. Because you never know it all. I've been doing this for what, 30 years now, I still don't, I'm still learning stuff. Uh, anyhow, so I wrote the, I wrote the book, it came out in 93, and uh, it sold out in like three weeks, and I knew I was onto something. Mm. Uh, the books don't usually do that, especially a book on cigars, but there hadn't been one. Right. There hadn't been one. Um, and I just kept updating it and updating it, and uh, here we are today. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, you know, you you your timing was perfect, right? 1993, you published this book. The audience, just like the internet audience today, just like the social media audience today, uh, in any industry, be it coffee or craft beer or wine or cybersecurity or cigars or uh, uh, clothing, man, any type, they want to be attached to a brand. And you offered them an opportunity to be attached to a lifestyle, right? A lifestyle of cigars other than the stereotypical big guy, big boss smoking right. cigars. So I, so I think that that is, is super, super cool that you had the opportunity to, to, to do that. And I also think that when you created the book, um, are you familiar with the Tobacconist University curriculum? Uh, yes, I am. Oh, you are? Okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what's your familiarity with that? Just um, 30 just, I've seen it. <clears throat> Yeah, no, I've seen it. Uh, I forget the fellow's name who started that. But, sure. Uh, he approached me at one of the, uh, at the trade show, the RTDA back then. Now it's the IPCPR, now it's the... PCA, anyhow, he approached me. And I thought, wow, you're really up on yeah. date on your cigar stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I call it's it cigar it's what I do. <laughs> it's what I do, Joe. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, yes, yeah, so I said it's a good idea. It's a good thing. I mean, you know, the whole thing is about disseminating information. And uh, the danger with the Internet is that there's a lot of misinformation on there. There's no fact checkers on the Internet. Sure. Sure. Uh, when I used to write for Playboy, I was, you know, people say, oh, you, oh, we got it for the articles. Well, let me tell you, um, I've written for a lot of magazines. Playboy was the only one where I would have five fact checkers named Bambi or Amber or whatever. Call me on the phone and ask me questions. Uh, if I wrote Columbus discovered America in 1492, they said, is that how you spell Columbus? How do you know it was 1492? And be that kind of... Uh, because Playboy had been sued so many times, they were super careful. So you don't have that on the Internet. Anybody can post anything, and the danger of that is there's a lot of misinformation, a lot mm -hmm. of good stuff on there, a lot of great websites. Um, podcasts like yours are invaluable because you're getting you know, firsthand information from other people that you might not normally get to meet. Right, right. Um, but but that's the that's that's the the pros and the cons of living in the uh, you know informational age. Right. The reason why I asked the Tobacconist University curriculum is because when I had an opportunity to to thumb through your book and some of the introductory chapters, I love how you take the approach of hey man, here's a field, and hey here's a plant, and the, and then you begin to tell that journey. 
So you actually went to the fields, met the players there, took pictures yourself, went on travel to do this self-study at a time that that curriculum wasn't invented yet, right? Exactly. It wasn't yeah, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. Nothing existed. Um, right. Yeah, I was. In fact, in a lot of instances, a lot of the in the smaller factories, the big guys understood uh, General Cigar, Altinus. Uh, they were consolidated cigar back then. Yeah. They knew I was doing something good for them. They were, but the little guys, the guy just you know making I don't know three thousand cigars a year. He had no idea why I was there and why I was asking him these questions. You know, okay, <laughs> okay, senor. You know, what do you, you know? He's not like a crazy guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I went there and I took um, almost all the pictures in that book. And uh, I, I could tell you a funny story. There's one shot of uh, I met the. It wasn't called the Chateau de la Fuente. There was just a tobacco field that Carlito had purchased. And he said, "I want you to come with me." Uh, so one of my trips down there said, I want, I want you to see what I'm planting. Um, I, I, but I don't want you to write about it because I don't think it's going to amount to much. <laughs> and it just rained. It just rained before. Right, and, right. uh, we, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we were, we were ankle, ankle deep in water. And, uh, I said, well, you, you're growing rice, you're growing rice here. He said, no, I'm, I'm doing an experimental plant, but please, please don't write about it. So in the first couple of editions of my book, I just talk about planting I think in this fourth edition, I tell you what it was. That turned out to be the very first planting of Opus X. Mm. Opus X. Wow. That's what it was. Yeah. Wow. yeah. You think about that, right? Wow. Drew, what do you think about that, right? I mean, you know, it's like, it's like you know, I really don't know if this whole thing is going to take off this whole Opus X thing, yeah. right? God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. I, 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 you know, we, 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 we got these plants over here. We don't know if they're going to do good. We're, yeah. we're, we're going to do this thing. And don't gonna, say anything. Don't say anything, but we're going to call this like Opus X, and we don't know if, if people yeah. don't like these sticks. <clears throat> Fast forward, they're like very well sought out. Highly rated here on oh, this show as well as yeah. others and whatnot. Yeah, he he completely changed the cigar yeah. uh, marketing world. Yeah, yeah, because all of a sudden you had a non-Cuban cigar that was as much, if not more, in demand than Cuban cigars. Sure. Plus, you could get it here. Sure. Plus, one of the things that made Opus X crazy popular. I mean, I remember this happened twice in my retail cigar experience, right? Um, and... Pff, totally two different cigars when, when i when i tell this story right opus x in the boom when we had the cigar shop on wickedon street in providence rhode island right opus x was a 16 week waiting list oh my god 22 dollars a piece we can <laughs> yeah. only sell you two and we took your money today wow and wow. there was a waiting list i mean pfft, it's almost like dealing with La Flora Dominicana, right? It's, all, right? <laughs> it's almost like dealing with them today, right? We'll take your money today and we'll get it over there, right? But, but no, but seriously, and then people would call. Now, people like would call from, I remember, Arlington, Texas, uh, oh, a place that begins with a C in Texas, all the, all the future hot spots, right? Yeah, yeah. All the future hot spots in, in um, uh, San Antonio, Texas. A lot of Texas, a lot of Atlanta, Georgia, right? We yeah. would take their money and charge them shipping. Now, we're shipping two cigars, and there was a waiting list. It was ridiculous. And this is when, you know, uh, there was no internet sales. Yep. It was phone, 56K modem, yep. right? Dial up. Right? Dial up, right? And, um, you know, and, and, and we, were, we were taking credit card numbers and writing them down on a pad. Yeah. And oh we would scan the, scan the thing, and then we'd charge them whatever shipping was. I'm going to call it 10 bucks. So they're $44, $54, <laughs> and, and we would make two, three thousand dollars $3,000 a day. Like, and then we'd have to be like, okay, we, we need to stop as a company, right? Because can't, you can't yeah. take like $6,000, right? Yeah. And, that, and, and in those days, or oh, you shouldn't. And we, and we were ethical about that because the cigar shop I was at turned into a cigar shop that's still open today. Over on Federal Hill, so obviously you don't get that way from yeah. from burning people, right? Yeah, for sure. And then we would tell them call back in one month, and they would call back two weeks. Anybody bounce from the order? Any credit cards didn't go through? It was crazy. And the only other time that that happened in my experience was the Rocky Patel decade. 
Yeah. Was when Rocky Patel released a decade, and we could only sell two. It was like, it was like ridiculous, and and then again it went. So you know, again, it tells you how fo- how forward that you know when when Richard was there in the field. The point of my story, right? Yeah. When Richard was there in the field, they were going to start this project and release this tobacco of Opus X. <clears throat> Drew and Jeff, do you guys have any questions for for Richard? Yeah, actually. Um... Speaking on the uh, the hotspots uh, that are here in Texas and Atlanta, we have uh, trends that will happen in uh, in the cigar industry uh, in that you kind of touched on earlier, Richard. I was wondering if uh, going back through history, if you've seen those kind of trends happen in other places uh, before the 80s, whenever we kind of had this more recent renaissance, if going back into like the 19 1800s 1700s if uh if those same kind of resurgences have happened in the past if this is if what we're experiencing now is just a little bit of uh history repeating itself to a degree mm. uh <clears throat> i'm not sure i understand the question uh drew but you're saying so, uh, does this have to so happen we, with with other industries no with uh with the uh, cigar industry <clears throat> Oh, you mean different evolutions of of uh, right. of, of cigar smoking? Yeah, it, it 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 nothing as dramatic as the boom of the '90s. I can tell you that. For sure. But <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, the trends uh, in the '50s are Candela was the big thing. Oh yeah, uh, the yeah. green light. Everybody wanted Candela. No one knew what EMS, was, you know, English market selection. They didn't know. They did it in Europe. That's what they spoke. Uh, mainly because they were Cubans, and that's a darker uh, tobacco. But Candela, that was a big thing in the, uh, in the 50s. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was before I was smoking, obviously. Um, and before I was born, of <laughs> course, you had, you had uh, machine-rolled cigars, uh, and that yeah. kicked off around the 20s. Uh, it was an offshoot of the tobacco industry. And uh, the Newman family actually started that, and... Uh, they wanted to make cigars affordable, and it was Wilson's vice president who said, you know, that great line, what this country needs is a good five-cent cigar. Mm-hmm. And the new one said, well, we're going to do that. We're going to see if we can make one. And he did. It was a short filler. It wasn't, you know, a great cigar, but by golly, it was a five-cent cigar. And now the average working guy, you know, after 29, there's a big depression. People couldn't afford anything. But right. the guy could afford his one cigar a week. That was that was a big deal for him. My father-in-law uh, is past now, uh, uh, rest his soul. He one of the one of our big bonding things was he was a cigar smoker, um, but he was used to smoking the inexpensive, the El Productos. That's all he could afford, and he would save it for a Friday night and smoke it. Um, and when I first began dating his daughter. I was amazed because, you know, you date when you date a girl, you know, and then eventually you get to a point where you're going to light up a cigar and you can tell. First, she doesn't say anything. Second date, she sits on the other side of the car. Third date, she gets out of the car. So. That's the end. There's no fourth date. <laughs> there, there, might be, there might be some truth in that. You know what I mean? For sure. But my, my wife, Joan, uh, Never said a word, never said a word, just didn't mind the cigar smoke. And then when I finally met her dad, I found out why. She grew up with it, you know, so mm. it was it was great. Ah, that's awesome. Wow. That's awesome. And we're still married. They, yeah, <laughs> I can attest yeah. to that. Joan is uh, Richard's uh, technical Chief technical yep. officer, yep. hook she's, him up. She's Richard's CTO <laughs> over there, helping the absolutely. electricity, she's helping the, the electricity brain. flow. She, absolutely, yeah, she's the brains. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Johnny, do you have a question? Um, uh, going back to um, the early twenties, you said it was Newman, correct? That started doing the that was the five cent cigar, right. right? That's just amazing because their factory's been uh, around forever. It's one hundred twenty four years. Yeah, one hundred twenty four years. That's yeah. just that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And they, they're okay. making. I mean, the sticks. They, they just consistently did it, and they're just they keep doing it, and it's just. And amazing. now they're making an American cigar, which yes. uh, is one of one of the highlights. I just came back from the trade show. Um, and one of the highlights was the American, which is an all made in America cigar. Yep. And that's just pretty darn impressive. You know, we, we used to have over 150 cigar factories in this country around the turn of the last century. 
Uh, and then, of course, became very expensive. And then, of course, um, all the cigar makers left Cuba. They set it in Ybor City, began making cigars there. That became too expensive. And then on and on. And now it's all gone to the DR and Nicaragua and Honduras. But by golly, the Newman uh, family is refer- this. And, you know, Drew Newman, I interviewed him about this. He said, I just want to show it can be done. And uh, I smoked one the other night. I mean, it's a mild cigar, but it's so well constructed. Right. Um, and they pay their guys by the hour. Yes. As opposed to, you know, the third world countries, they pay them by the cigar. Yep. So there's a lot of incentive to crank out a lot of cigars. But um, Drew said, we don't want, we'd like them to make 75 a day. But whatever they make, it's got to be perfect. So and it's, it, I can attest, it is really well constructed. It's actually great that you brought that up. We're bringing Drew Newman to Stogie Geeks. Uh, uh, there, I can't wait for that interview. It might happen v- in studio. We're, we're, we're trying to, to, to get that. That's going to be, I mean. That's a groundbreaker. If he's in studio, that's going to be a three-hour episode. We haven't Easily. had a three-hour story. <laughs> yeah. Well, other than today with technical issues. Yeah. But, but, but uh, you know, we, we haven't had, like, it's one of those things, like, like when you speak to a Drew Newman or a Nessa Placencia, like yeah. you, you mm-hmm. just, or uh, Men, uh, Manuela Noah, right yeah. from from La Aurora. Like you know, you, yeah. you 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 have so many questions. Or when we speak to you, I mean, you know, your book. One of the points I like about your book is like finding your perfect cigar. You know, mm-hmm. like fi- finding your cigar and taking it through right. that journey. I really like the way that you speak to the audience, as in if you're you're saying, hey. Come along with me. Come along with me here. Read this text, right? Follow my journey from country and, and meeting these people. And you tell stories that, like you just told, like, what, like you know, we're going to start this company called the Opus X. We don't know how it's going to work out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, 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 and it's, it's really super cool that you did it in such a way that now you're in your fourth edition um, of this book. To really bring it out and to really let the um, cigar enthusiast, cigar aficionado, however you want to you you want you want to say it, to really go on his or her own journey. Like this is one of those books. I definitely suggest that you get the hard cover, or if you get the soft cover, it's fine uh, there too. I don't even know if you have, you have soft cover. I don't even know. Don't Not know. a soft cover okay. on that, uh, oh, but yeah. there you can get an ebook though. Oh you yeah, ebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. you have no ebooks, Richard. I don't even know what that is. I'm, just, <laughs> yeah. I'm making up a word. Right? Yeah. Anyway, what's a no, Kindle? So, 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 so you get this hard cut, and you will keep notes in the margin. Like it's so, it's so. And 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 what I love about it is when when I first thumbed through it, I was like, oh yeah, it's like it, it really takes the pictures. And you actually went out and actually did that. And I, I th- in a time of no internet and no. There was no Nicaraguan boom. Yeah, it was no. Dominica. It was you know it was no Cubans. It, it, and and it, it's just it's just so cool to 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 just kick back. And it's one of those books that you will go to over and over again. I know Drew picked up a copy of the book, yes, so I, I know I know Drew Bless has you. got he's got he's got at least three questions for you. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I, I I just gotta say, Richard. I mean, just reading your book. I mean. Uh, you know, education-wise, I mean, for everybody that's uh, that that you know, for them to really understand, you know, understand the, the process uh, from from you know, like right now, I'm 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 in chapter, uh, I'm in the beginning, I'm in page 35, 36, 37. <laughs> that's a good place to start. Yeah, but just 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 overall for me, I mean, my experience in this, and what a lot of my what I'm going to impart to my friends. Uh, who smoke cigars or who are just getting into cigars. It's just to understand the history, understand, you know, what it takes, you know, what it takes for a, uh, a uh, for production, you know, just getting to that point. Uh, also the education about, about, uh, you know, with the FDA, you know, that, that to me hits home right now because it's a big, it's a big deal uh, yep. with uh, the FDA trying to lump us in with the, Cigarette manufacturers, the e-cigarette yeah. manufacturers, mm. 
really yeah. creating a mess. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. And, and that's yeah. It's interesting. A good point, uh, Drew, that uh, comes to mind. At this particular trade show, I just came back from, uh, I noticed the lack of, uh, usually there's a ton of new cigars. Mm. I don't see that happening a lot um, because no one knows what's going to happen. You know, uh, the FDA's got this floating rule that a new cigar's got to go through all the testing and $3,000 a cigar, a cigar uh, fee. Um, no, no one can afford that. Nobody can afford that. So people are kind of holding back. Davidoff didn't have one new cigar. They're focusing on their uh, Nicaraguan, their uh, the Yamasa, their you know their existing stogies. Yep. But they didn't bring anything new out. And a couple yep. other companies like that, same reason. I said, how come no new cigar? Well, we don't know what's going to happen. Ashton, another case in point. A lot of great cigars. Every year they have something. A new shape, if nothing else. Not this year, because even the shapes, yes. according to proposed laws, uh, right. are going to be taxed and, and fined, if you will. I call it a fine more than a tax. Anyhow, so yeah, uh, more power to the uh, the newly formed PCA. Uh, more power to the Cigar Association. Of, you know, these guys uh, are on the forefront, and they're dealing with people who don't get it. That's the tough part. They're dealing right. with people who don't understand about cigars. If they would put cigar smokers in the FDA, half our problems might be over. That's sure. not happening. Sure. See, see, I'm from a different camp, right? Uh, I've gone on record in my cigar radio show. I, was, uh, I, I had a cigar radio show here, Richard, in the province metro, pre my Stogie Geeks um, tenure here. And I've said on record since 2015, that I'm from a different camp, right? You want to charge someone three three thousand dollars a blend or whatever? Go for it. Get it done, right? Get it done because you know what's gonna happen. Every batch is a race to 150 or 250 thousand cigars, and you cascade that price. It's gonna raise the price 70 cents. And let's face it. And Jeff, you're a manager in a cigar shop, right? Yeah. I don't care about the FDA. We're all going to pay 70 cents more for what we like. Yeah. It is what it is, right? Well, it, 70 cents more, more, some more right? per stick. Now, I have been told in 2015 and 2016 when I was on the radio, you don't understand. You don't understand how it works. It's going to hurt the business. No, it's not going to hurt the business. It's going to bring, this is my opinion, right? It's going to yeah. bring the barrier to entry into the industry higher, okay? Let's talk yeah. economics now, right? If it brings the barrier to entrance higher there, that means that the people who are going to produce, now all the big companies are like, whatever, right? We've been around for 125 years. We've been moving and shaking for 125 years. The Newmans, Altidus, mm -hmm. General, they, they, you know, Davidoff, right? Yeah, okay, so the little guy, well, guess what? Maybe the little guy can team up with the bigger guy and say, hey, I produce this real good stick, and I think... If the FDA goes through, you're going to see a lot of consolidation of the market from the little guy teaming up with the bigger guy who's got the pockets, right? Because it happens in any industry. That's point number one that, that I want to make. Point that we're, we're all going to pay for that. Point number two, I agree with you, right? These politicians do not know that wrapper binder filler from premium cigars, non-machine rolled, are natural Products. There's no additives. Yeah. There's and no preservatives. That, uh, and, and, Senator and now. Rubio, or uh, yeah, Senator Rubio, he's actually uh, doing a good job in fighting to get that determination separate from the piece mm -hmm. of legislation that's really arming uh, the industry right now. Right. So yeah. props to him. Real quick shout out because he's actually, uh, I think he's down in Florida. Um, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He's actually fighting for that uh, determination. Sure. Uh, to, to actually make it separate that premium hand rolled cigars are different mm. than your bullshit Swisher sweets and cigarettes and all that other kind of thing. Sure. Uh, point number so, three from Joe Hosempa. <laughs> point yeah. number three from Joe Hosempa is I, I'm going to write these down. Right? I have an, I August seventh. My son, my firstborn son, will be eleven months old, and he's going through the waving thing. Right? He meets everybody. He waves high. Right? He waves high. Waves yeah. high. And, and our neighbors and people say, oh, he's going to run. He's going to be a great politician. 
And I said, I said, he better not be a politician because he better get more than C's in school. <laughs> that's that's my point. Yeah. Point number three. He well, better, see, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was. I literally say that, and people get heated. Like, like I live in, oh. I live in a highly conservative town. That if you Google it, they can't get out of their own way with stuff. You know, we put our first. You know, uh, uh, what's the cor- politically correct word? Uh, uh, guys, boys kissing boys photo in the art museum. The whole oh, news oh, station was there. LGBTQ thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. The LB, the well, BK, ZY, whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to be, be. You know what I mean? Like, like, just be, just be. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah. And and so, uh, you know, it, it, and people get all heated and all that stuff. But the FDA, you know, I honestly say, and I stated this in 2015. At some point, I'm gonna bring in my audio clips, have Johnny rip them up. And say, you know something? Nothing's gonna happen from the FDA. And I know, and I have spoke to Mike Bellity on this show, Glenn Case on this show. I spoke to a uh, 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 manufacturer. Uh, you don't understand how it works. No, I understand how it works. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, 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 they don't know how to deal with it. And it's just like a marijuana issue. It's like a a a. a alcohol regulation for these craft breweries some of them are under a farm license so they have to close at dusk because they're yeah. grown at the, you know and all these right. little they just they, 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 nobody knows it's where can we get money where can we get money because we just keep spending and they're looking at tobacco and unfortunately premium cigars gets wrapped up into that it's 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 right. it's and and I honestly mm. think here we are I said to Mike Bellity on my show, who sponsored my show, Cigar Club Radio, was my, my first for, for, for MLB Cigar Ventures. And I said to him in 2015, it's going to be 2020 before we know what the heck direction the FDA is going. And you know something? I'm looking at the date right now, and guess what? I'm not too far off. No, no, no. <clears throat> you know, well, and you know what? I don't even know if it's going to happen in 2020. It's just, it's so convoluted. Like I said, you're, t- you're, you're talking a different language to the FDA. And uh, Senator Rubio is one of the few people who actually came out for us, for cigars. Uh, we need a few more like him who will just do that. And the, the, the irony is most of these congressmen, and a few congresswomen I happen to know smoke cigars. Sure. They smoke cigars. Well, I mean, come on. You know. I mean, you need to smoke cigars if you're going through 137 pages of regulation on how to cross the street. You know what I mean? (laughs) You you, you need a cigar. You'd be like, like, it's it's just like like this show. I need to pour some more of this whiskey that uh, what are we what are we drinking this is uh, <laughs> it's the it's the it's the, uh, the down that bloody mary already uh, oh, oh the bloody mary's yeah. kick the bloody mary's <laughs> kick i need to pour some more of this because my ice is melting which is a bad sign <laughs> oh <laughs> well that's going to release a lot of those uh you know soft, smoky notes that's, that's a good thing yeah yeah that's yeah. how i yeah that's how i drink my art bag i'll uh take a cube one cube mm-hmm. put it in the glass Make sure I've covered the cube with with yeah. the liquid. Absolutely. And yep. <laughs> just let us just let us sit there and sip it. And as you sip it, you've noticed this, and I'm I'm envious because I'm not drinking it, but I'm gonna in about another couple hours. Couple here. seconds uh, if it keeps talking. Yeah, to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it, and it just evolves in the glass. It gets uh, you get more and more of the peatiness. It's a soft smoke, you know. It's not a hard smoke. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes great with a medium to full-bodied cigar. I wouldn't smoke it with some Dominicans because it would trounce that cigar. Yep. Uh, I would do something like the Four Roses, you know, when you do a nice, you know, bourbon. It's 90 proof, but it's such a, an easy-drinking bourbon. Uh, yeah. You can do that one straight. Or, again, I, I take a cube of ice, and uh, some people want to put water in to open it up. I, You know, that's a personal thing. I just yeah. don't do it. Just put it into um, the bottle that way. You should drink it that way. That's yes. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 liquid. It means it's meant to be drunk. Yes. However you want it. Absolutely, yeah. Richard. Try to. I mean, first and foremost, I mean, we we we're just scratching the surface of your book. So I certainly want to invite you back, yeah. right? Because, oh, very kind. Because sure. because yeah. an hour is just not enough time. <laughs> To 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 you know just gather the wealth of knowledge. Take the Stogie Geek listener through some of the points in your book that 
you wanted to articulate and and what they can expect if they pick up your book and you know more importantly like how how satisfactory is that for you because you 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 have another book here and i'm you know my add kicking in is kicking in but you have another book here which we haven't even scratched the surface of right 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 there right. too so take us through some of the points in either book that you want to reference they are on the show notes for you story uh story geeks listeners you go to storygeeks.com forward slash 302 all of the, all of the show notes are there richard's books there uh you can throw them into google and find all of his other works as well but what are some of the points that you want to talk about within our remainder you know 15 20 minutes here to to, to really articulate uh, what's in your book? Uh, basically, I mean, to me, the most important uh, chapters, if you want to get down to it, yes, finding finding the perfect cigar, yes, and the differences in the tobaccos, what they mean. You know, Maduro as, as opposed to EMS. Uh, what are the differences? What uh, flavor wise, I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, when you walk into a humidor, I mean, for a newbie, it's pretty overwhelming. Sure. So I always say. I say, don't walk in alone, walk in with your new best friend, the tobacconist, because he knows what he's got there. And uh, if he's good, he'll say, what do you like to drink? What do you like to eat? Um, and he can guide you toward a cigar. That's what this book does. And so that's the most important thing I the takeaway, if you will, of the cigar book was one to give a cigar smoker the confidence to look at a, an array of cigars and to have not a detail, but certainly a broad knowledge of what he's going to possibly expect. Because you never know what's really in that cigar until you light it up. But it'll, it'll tell him how it was made, what to look for in construction, and also the shape. Does he want to? Is he, if he has half an hour to smoke, you're not going to buy a Churchill. But if you you know have a long weekend, you go on a vacation, uh, maybe you will. Uh, my favorite shape right now is a Robusto, you know, mm. four, uh, four by 50. That's 45 minutes for me if I milk it. Yep. Uh, and that's what I've got. I've got 45 minutes out on my uh, front porch or my back, you know, my I call it the Cigarden. It's yep. in the book, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a, a little landscaped area made for pipe, uh, pipe and cigar smoking. Um, and I go out there, I smoke my cigar. I know how much time I've got. And I know what kind of cigar I want. I know what kind of mood I'm in. Um, so that's that's really the, the the takeaway on the thing, uh, and on the spirits book, what I wanted to do there was, I mean there are great there are already good books on on uh, single malts and bourbons and uh, champagnes. I wanted to do a book that would give you a chapter on every major and some minor spirits in the world. So you would read that book and come away with a knowledge. Of what you know, from Soshu to Bajo to Bourbon to vodka, you could go to that chapter and find out how it's made, find out the history, find out a little bit. Cause I've got my tasting notes in there, mm -hmm. um, keeping in mind that they're my tasting notes. So, I mean, I like Cabernet Sauvignon, I like brown spirits, so you got to qualify that. Um, and you can read that book, and you just need one, you don't have to buy 10 books, you buy one book. Uh, Rich, my book, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my book, <laughs> and, and you've got it all between two covers. Yep, absolutely. That's awesome. Uh, you, you mentioned you like brown spirits. Yep, and Cab Cabernet what, Sauvignon and Cabernet Sauvignon. Love, love Cab Sauvignon. Yeah. Love, love Cab. Cab. Yeah. And and I, I'm assuming you must have had some taste testing going on there. Have some what, taste testing, you're yeah, saying? Yeah, taste testing, right? Like you you, oh, you tried in, some in stuff. The, yeah. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's my life. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so you sit in your beer, your, your cigar in, right? And yeah. you uh, experiment with different spirits. Yep. And um, maybe with company, maybe alone. Do you write alone? Like take us, take us through like a little bit of your kind of personal. The process. Like, like your writing process. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> used to be with a typewriter, uh, but now it's with a computer. <laughs> <laughs> We're not shocked. This is my pen. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, yep. This is a, it's a oh, quill feather here. Nice. You, just, 
Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I got, I rhyme with that. Uh, yeah, but, but sorry, I do actually have this. It's a pen. It's a real pen. Somebody gave it to me as a joke, but I use it. Uh, no, I write alone. I usually write at night. I write uh, late at night sometimes. Um, I will tell you uh, a, a true funny story. When I was doing the cigar book, um, it was I was trying to make a deadline. And, you know, when you test cigars, uh, I can't test more than four to five at a time. Uh, you, otherwise, your palate gets totally overloaded mm -hmm. um and so and you don't smoke the whole cigar you smoke down to half if you did you know the first light is the most powerful light because that's where that, that's not a true indication of any cigar flavor mm -hmm. you have to get past that initial burn into the body of the cigar uh if i'm relaxing i'll smoke the whole thing down to the band uh, uh you know until my facial hair bursts in a flame but uh <laughs> if i'm just smoking it to test I go halfway down, making my notes, and the flavors will change, and then I put it down. Okay, so I'm doing that during the book. I'm doing like, you know, four to five cigars a day. And then at the end of that, uh, it's usually early in the morning, late at night, you know, 3, 4 a.m., whatever, uh, I'll pour myself a nice whiskey in a snifter, go on my front porch, and pick one of the cigars I smoke, relight it, and just sit there and relax with it, and I was doing this one time near the end of the book, and I was it was like six in the morning, okay? I've been writing all night. I'm really, so I, oh, God. And I took my snifter, six in the morning. The mailman comes by. <laughs> he sees me <laughs> on my front porch. I've got, a, I've got a single malt. I'm smoking a cigar. He just shakes his head and walked on. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> didn't understand the art. He didn't understand the art. I mean, you, you have to go with with when you're the most creative, for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly, sure. exactly. And that all so, uh, that all pertains yeah. to you, you know. Like yeah. Richard has his niche of when he wants to write, and that's that was a great question to kind of figure out, you know, that process because you want to know that process and how how you get your mind right. You got to get your mind right. You got to yeah. be in that right. Uh, exactly. The right spot, the right place, the right time with the right stick and the right drink. And right. then all those things come together. And before you know it, he's got, uh, you know, 50 pages written or whatever, right. or however many it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Jeff and Drew, do you have any questions? Man, I just, where do you live so I can send you a bottle of ink to go with that pen? <laughs> <laughs> send me a bottle of blood in here. Oh, he wants to send you the ink. To yeah. go with the oh, pen. the ink offered my pen. Oh, thank you. Oh, send me a new bird. This thing's getting worn out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. That cracks me up, man. I got to respect that, though. Don't ever change. Nah, yeah. Don't. Yeah, please yeah. don't. You know. Yeah, for me, Richard. I mean, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know. Um, in in my cigar cigar garden because I'm gonna start a new business now with the she sheds. Uh, rival the she said she said no it's a and, it's a good thing i'll tell you a quick story the about garden? the cover <laughs> the cigar thing is a good no but the speaking of drinks the cover of this book uh well you've got it there but uh i actually designed this cover i didn't get credit for it but uh we we had the title the connoisseur's guide to worldwide spirits like worldwide spirits okay let's put a globe in there and the most popular shape right now is the sphere, you know, the round sphere. Oh, yeah, yeah. The severe, and and the I sphere, said, uh, let's you. put a sphere in a glass of brown whiskey. So it could be whiskey, it could be cognac, but it's going to be brown. Uh, and make that sphere a globe. Well, the art director didn't get it. And he sent me a, a, a rough, you know, schematic of a highball glass with a bunch of square cubes with little tiny globes in them you know i said no you're, you're you're not getting it you're not getting it so i actually <laughs> went down to my corner bar i ordered a jack daniel and uh i said fill this glass half up with jd i said you have a sphere cube i took it in there took a picture of it he emailed it to the guy and uh i said that's what i want and that's how the cover of the book came about wow okay awesome, awesome. Wow. Okay. Now here's the big question: Did you really email it or did Joan? Actually, <laughs> we got a carrier pigeon. We got a carrier pigeon. Yeah, yeah you, you you put the pigeon, you rolled it up, and you sent yeah. it to him. Right. <laughs> go, go, go. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Like I don't know. Like I I look at the book, and it's just so 
entrenched with 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 so much knowledge i want to encourage the stogie geek listener definitely jump on there check it out check out the show notes stogiegeeks.com forward slash 302 look at the work you know on the ebook version you can get the first so many pages or whatnot amazon does a great job yeah. at, at doing the a uh, sample uh, the kindle version and whatnot is, uh, it's 16.99 for the kindle version okay for the ebook which yeah. is awesome yeah it's, and, it's and 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 there you go you know it's certainly price of a good cigar yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. super super cool yeah. and if you have audible uh the audiobook's uh free so if you're subscribed to yeah. audible you can just download the book right on there and you can just listen to it on the okay. audio. yeah oh i'm i'm on audible so yeah definitely yeah um, I didn't even know that, Richard. What, <laughs> Richard? <laughs> what do you like to smoke? Like brand names? Uh, it depends on my mood. It's like my whiskey. It depends on I'm my the same mood. way. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I gravitate a lot toward Hondurans, uh, and I mean Nicaraguans. Nicaraguans. Mm. Um, I used to smoke Hondurans. I, uh, I guess I started out with Laredo Monterey, but uh, I love Padrones. Um, my go-to cigar, you know, nothing else. Uh, the, the Dominican, I do a Fuente uh, Hemingway. Mm. I just, I just love, I love the shape. Easy to light, easy to clip. It's an old Cuban shape. Uh, Don Carlos Senior, rest his soul, just passed away recently, but um, that was his shape. He introduced it, reintroduced it to this country. Uh, so I love the uh, the Hemingway. Um, Nicaraguan Davidoffs are great. Uh, uh, you know, this it depends on my mood, really. I tell you, I probably don't smoke things like the uh, Macanudo Cafe because it's a little too mild for me. I like a little more meat. Um, yeah. Having said that, the Cuiba Black, I like. Um, yep. Yeah, it just depends on where I'm at. So, so you you tend to stick to more of what we call here on the Story Geek Show the classic facings, the one that have been around. Yeah. What's your take on this whole? I mean. I was told never to use this word, uh, the B word, the boutique word, right? What's your take yeah. on like the small batch stuff, the cigars, the cigar companies of some of the smaller companies that we interview here on Story Geeks? Uh, mm. What's your experience on on some of them? Are you familiar with with some of those brands, or do you tend to gravitate towards the classics? Well, I mean, professionally, I I smoke uh, everything. Unless it's a, a short filler or something that I, I know is not going to be good. You look at the construction. But on the boutique one-off cigars, um, the problem with them, usually, not always, usually they're very good. What if you like it and you want to go back and get another box? Here comes you volume can't. five of the book. <laughs> <laughs> volume, five. <laughs> volume five. Why boutique cigars need to merge with bigger companies regardless of the FDA? Which is part of my point. Which is part of my point, right? Like you got bigger purse yeah. strings, join forces, and freaking kick ass and be done. <laughs> and tell the but FDA, that's what happens. Yeah. tell the FDA, call me maybe. I'll raise it seventy cents and we'll move on. You just put right. my point. You just put right. Done deal. You just put my point. That's it. That's it. Right. Yeah. So, so any particular brands that stick out that you really, really like? Because in your book, I'm gonna be honest with you. In your book, what caught my eye? very quickly was the Paul Gamerians. Mm -hmm. And you had a picture in the Finding Your Perfect Cigar chapter, right? Yeah. Finding Your Perfect yeah. Cigar. Is that the right chapter? Finding Your Perfect Cigar? Is that the right... The right the right yeah. phrase. Yeah. I don't know. I just I have to go look at it. I wrote the book. Uh, I right? <laughs> in that it's chapter, in some place. In that chapter of Finding the Perfect Cigar... You have a picture yeah. of Paul Gamerians. And let me tell you something. Paul Azadorian, founder of Stoy Geeks, a huge yeah. fan of that cigar. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and obviously that picture was taken a, 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 a couple years ago, right? So, so to speak, yeah. right? Yeah. So any particular kind of boutiques that you kind of smoked and you kind of wish that were kind of still around that you really enjoyed? Um, yeah. That's a good question. And you know what? Nothing really comes to mind and and i'll tell you why sure because i can i can get so many good cigars now uh you know padron uh they're hard to find but you can get them um 
Placentia has started making cigars. Yes. They're hard to find, yes. but you can get them. Yes. And they're good, and I love them. Um, so <clears throat> any cigars I really, really miss off the top of my head? Uh, no. Yeah. No. Because uh, yeah, I, 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 like I said, you can, you can get... <laughs> We have more cigars now than we've ever had in the history of cigar smoking. There yep. are more now. Mm-hmm. So the choice, it becomes overwhelming. Again, one other reason I was motivated to keep updating the book. There's so much. How do you make a decision? What do you do? Well, the best way to make a decision, buy a couple. I say a couple because cigars are handmade. Sometimes you're going to get you're going to get one that's rolled too tightly. Well, don't judge the cigar like that. Yep. Yep. Try the second one. Now, if that's too tight, you got a problem. But I've had <laughs> I've had this. I've had this where you just you know, that's not it's the same cigar. This one is rolled much better. So then you go with that. And then if there's any doubt, you try a third one. But yeah, I just say experiment. Um, you know, uh, and, and I know the cigar companies hate this. I say if you're starting out, don't buy a box. Buy twenty different cigars. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Oh. I'm 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 a firm believer in that camp. You know, when I travel, I like to get some of the stuff that I either been looking for, or some of the stuff that I you know uh, like and can't get, or some of the stuff that I even never tried. You know, and even when uh, on the first segment of this episode, when Drew and Jeff were talking about uh, their sticks of the week, and we were doing a review. Uh, two of their smokes I really never had an opportunity to actually try yet just mm-hmm. because of the regional differences of the cigar from the distribution yeah. standpoint and you know I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeking them out and and, and to actually tr- uh, trying them but yeah here on Story Geeks with the boutique revolution or the small batch revolution sorry right uh, <laughs> with, 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 with the small batch revolution it's like you know I can't wait to the second release because what happens is they have a business model, right? Similar to your Opus X model, right? We're going to start with this 250 batch of sticks. We're going we're gonna to introduce them to, to there. And then when they re- get past the 250 and everybody loves them and the hottest thing on the market and everybody seeks after them, the next 250, if they're just as consistent, now they're really on to something. And what I find out is it's kind of like a conveyor belt. It, it, it's a big conveyor belt of, okay, this one goes up and continues. This one goes up and continues. They, they made it past their 250. Most of them go, boom, quality down, quality down, quality down. You brought up an interesting point. You mentioned it. And as you know, Stogie Geeks listeners, all of my interviews are not scripted, and I don't ask pre-questions. You mentioned Nesta Placencia. And mm-hmm. that's a, a Placencia Cigars. Let me tell you something. That is an interesting business model, right? Because yeah. they make a boatload of stuff for everybody else. Oh, 70%, right? I would say, right? right? Um, my, my number is 74% of the yeah. industry. Yep. That's my yep. number, right? Um, I'm probably very close within 2 or, two or 3% give or take, margin, right? It's kind of like a political poll, right? You know, this guy or girl is winning, but there's a margin of swing votes. Yep, right? Right. There's the electoral <laughs> right. votes over there. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, but no, so he makes all of that stuff, and then he has his, off the top of my head, six, oh, yeah, yeah. six blends, and they're really good. Like, they're, yeah. they're really, really good, and they're really sought after. And I'm like, why don't you go and – Make those like expand on that blend, and the reason being business model, right? When you cascade it back to the business, doesn't have to. He's rolling all of Alec Bradley's stuff. Oh, he's rolling. Yeah. He's rolling all of, and I can go down the list and do all of that. He's rolling all of that type of stuff, and and so now the onus is on that company to yeah. push those sticks into market right. those sticks. You know. Yeah, so, well, he's he's got some of the best farms in Nicaragua. And Honduras, most people don't realize he's got farms in both countries, so right on the border. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've been to his factory. I've known Nestor for years and years, and uh, and, I, and I knew his kids when so they were like little kids. Now mm-hmm. they're part of the family, which and to right. me, boy, that is so satisfying. You talk to uh, Nestor Andres, and he's the, the son has kind of taken over the forefront. Although right. they, you know, he's got two brothers, but boy. To talk to him, he's he's so proud 
of what the family is doing, not what he's doing, right? What the family's doing, and it's just gratifying to me. And and then you go back to his father, who is like the humblest guy in the world. Oh, the, oh, these guys are that way. Car, uh, Carlos Fuentes Senior is the same way. Great cigar people, but so humble, so humble. I get turned off when I get some of these new guys. Hey, I got the best cigar hacker. You're gonna love this. Uh, you know, I, I I feel my defense is going up. I try to be open, but these guys are the real deal. And uh, and to get back to the Placentias, yeah, it's uh, it's I liken it to uh, the winemakers. Uh, I've got a good friend, uh, Austin Hope, who makes wine in um, the Central Valley, Paso Robles. Well, Austin's dad made a lot of money growing the best grapes in the Central Coast and selling them to other wine companies who were reaping the benefits and making wine with, you know, the Hope's Vineyards. And Austin uh, said, hey, Dad, we got the grapes. Why don't we make our own wine? <laughs> so they started doing that. Yeah. And they're, they're winning awards. They're great wines. And, uh, and Austin's a big cigar smoker, too, which is another reason we kind of bond uh and so that's what happened with the placentias they you know they said uh, I and mean, it was his younger kids that said oh, dad we got all this tobacco all this stuff we could you know we're full capacity but we can get and train more rollers why don't we make our own cigars makes perfect sense and boy there's three they've done three um um, Alma series, you know, Alma de Fuego is the newest one. I uh, just had that. It's pretty, pretty darn good. Right. Um, uh, and um, every cigar is is great. The, you know, I can't wait for the next one. They're going to do two more on this Alma series. Yep. But what's funny, I, I asked uh, Nestor Andres, does that mean we'll have the next one next year? He says, no, I don't know. He says, we want to wait and see how the tobacco is fermenting, how it turns out, how right. the crop's harvested. That's the mark of, you know, really exacting science. They're just not, they're not making tobacco to sell. They're making tobacco that's going to be really, really good. Yeah. Right. right. And, and, I have, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm real sorry. quick, Richard, I want to go back to uh, what you were saying about uh, – how you know some of the, the younger guys come to you with these cigars? Oh, it's the best cigar in the market. I feel like <laughs> yeah. when that when when something like that happens, it makes you almost want to judge that cigar differently. No, like it it, it kind of gives me a different mentality. Like, oh well, this guy's telling me that this is gonna you know reach <laughs> up to this level, and it's gonna kind of it's gonna make you think about it differently versus you know the the humble guys like Placentia saying like you know well you know we've done this and this and they kind of just give you the facts and they're they're letting you judge that cigar and how you feel about it as opposed to the people coming and saying oh this is the best stick on the market you're going to have a different feel on how you judge that and how you smoke that cigar yeah yeah it's, it's absolutely right and you try not to you know i yeah. just you, you, you know, i'm still going to smoke it yeah of course but in the back of my mind is boy this better be damn yeah good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're giving you that right. higher expectation yep. they're giving right. you the higher expectation right. and when you smoke it and you're like yeah it's right. uh absolutely yeah. I, yeah. I i i agree with johnny yeah. like you know like we we interview new classic facings all you know open microphone they come in, talk about their brands, and it's amazing to hear their stories. But, again, for me, it's that conveyor belt, right? I want you to get past your first 250 sticks, 250,000 sticks, get that done. If you can produce with, with consistency, I'm in, right? And there are so many that kind of ju ju just fall off the map. And there are kind of so many silenced, like the Newmans, uh, some done by General, some done by Altus, Padron, Davidoff. They're like, what, it's a different, it's a different business model, and I get that, but they need, the, they trust their stuff, right? It's like yeah. boxing or MMA, it's, right? Yeah, you gotta go, you get in the ring, and you do, you know, the business ring, and and you know, you only get paid for first place. If you're on the shelf and they pick your stick, you win, right? So you know, you gotta kind of tr tr trust your stuff, yeah, yeah the and quality, stuff like that. The quality's I, in the product. Before we wrap up this interview, I have two quick questions. Uh, sure. and then, and then there, uh, but before we end, Drew and Jeff, do you have any questions before that? Yeah, I got one real quick. Okay. Uh, we'll go Jeff, see... then my two, and then we go, we got to wrap this up. Gotcha. Yep. Now, when do you see, uh, collaboration yeah. cigars? So like, uh, I'm mm. smoking one right now by Hoyo de Monterey and AJ Fernandez. Uh, whenever you see one of those, does that kind of pique your interest and do you get excited for that? Or depending on who it is, do you kind of shrink away from it and be like, ah, shit, 
Sucks or sucks is gonna fuck up this cigar. Right that's, that's actually that's a great that's, that's question. A, uh, that's a great. That's a great question. I wish I'd asked it. Uh, no, that was a great question. Um, and that's becoming more and more prevalent, Jeff, as you probably know. Yes. Uh, no, that's a, that does not turn me off. That's just the opposite effect of the in-your-face kind of guy. Um, like uh, um, uh, EPC, you know, uh, Ernesto, making great cigars for other people. Uh, he is a one heck of a cigar blender. Mm. Um, and if he's making a cigar for somebody else, I'm interested in that cigar. AJ Fernandez, you mentioned, um, he's got to be a multi-billionaire by now because he's making cigars for everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> there's, there's yeah. so many I think it's blends. easier to name the people he's not making cigars for. Sure, absolutely. But, uh, but again, he has a special way of fermentation. He has a special uh, area of land where he's growing special tobaccos. Uh, he just, uh, they introduced um, Monte Cristo is doing one of their, uh, their limited editions, but made by AJ. And I haven't tried it yet. I've got three of them here. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a hell of a cigar. I like the Monte's anyhow. I like AJ stuff anyhow. So here you've got his tobacco under their name, but it's pretty easy to AJ for a cigar, of yeah. course. But it's, I would uh, I just uh, want to remember that's that, the so one in the box. Doesn't turn me like off. Yeah. Velvet cover to it. I think we've got those in here. So, and they've been going like that. So yeah. uh, I can't remember the name of them. But they, uh, but yeah, I think I know which ones you're talking about. So well, yeah. yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting, interesting yeah. step. Yeah. So we're going to. Awesome. We're gonna, Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Richard, I have two quick questions for you. First sure. one's pretty easy. You love wine, right? I love wine. Wine with cigars. I tell the Story Geeks listeners, and they email me, joeh at com. I can't get into wine and cigars. I can't get into wine and cigars. I'm like, go red. What do you think? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just go red, right? <laughs> if you go red. <laughs> yeah, problem solved. Problem, problem solved. solved. Go red. Go I, red. I, I was, go yeah. Cabernet. Go red Zin. Go Melback, yeah. like you, 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 you know, you don't want to do. You yeah. can do Melo, but go Melback. So, what's your take on that? Yeah, no, no, I'm all for that. In fact, um, I don't. I left it in this edition or not, but um, I, I talk about you know wine and cigars. Mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense. They're agricultural products, right? right. They're aged, right? Um, and they can be aged, so uh, I'm all for that. No, 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 no. And I, and I love, like you said, Cabernet, um, a spicy Zin. I've even done it with some Pinots. You can do some Dominican cigars with uh, with Pinot Noir, which yep. uh, only good. only if the Pinot Noir is ice cold. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Only you have to make that. You, have, you know, don't be drinking Pinot Noir in Texas with <laughs> you and Jeff because it, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. You know? No, 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 nothing worse than warm wine. I was uh, not to, not to digress. I know you're pressed for time. <laughs> That's all good. I, 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 I was in I was in Dubai. Not to name drop, but I was in Dubai uh, for the polo matches, uh, and I was covering a whiskey called Royal Salute and. They had a luncheon for us, and somebody had donated a couple of cases of really, really expensive French Bordeaux. I mean, really expensive. And they left it in the sun. It was 110 degrees. Oh. That was that wine glass was so hot, I couldn't pick it up. I couldn't touch it. I had yeah. to put it back down. It totally destroyed the wine. It just right. destroyed the wine. Right. So, yeah, there's no point to the story except don't drink hot wine. I guess that's... Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, Richard... After our last question, I'm going to wrap up the show, but make sure you stay on. And Jeff and Drew, make sure that you stay on Skype and we'll, we'll close it down. Uh, I'm sorry, Zoom. And then we'll, we'll close it down. So stay on. My last question. And Richard, I want to invite you to come back where we can expand more on some of the spirits, explore more of your book. Uh, and definitely because I feel that this could be a cadence journey through Stoey Geeks for you to go through your book, for sure. <laughs> I love doing it. You know? All right. All right. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll get, before then, 
I know that we're gonna be like Richard. We're calling you. Jump on Zoom, and you're gonna be like that. It's yeah. gonna be like Jack Ryan. You're gonna be. Yeah. You're gonna be an expert. I think, well, I'll done. tell you. Yeah. I'm, I've got my quill. I'm, I'm all set here. Yeah. I got all this yeah. Stuff. R- Richard is is part of the production team. The other half's over there. Mark. Shout out to Mark for uh, oh, doing yeah. the whole show solo. Uh, he's awesome. Uh, I think we're gonna. It's, it'll be a little easier to set you up with a Skype. That way we can call you. All you gotta do is click that green button. Everything will be good. Yeah, so we'll, Johnny, we'll work that out. We'll work that out. For, for, for you Story Geeks listeners, Johnny is our audio engineer here at Security Weekly. So he does all of the, the whole network and all of that stuff. And I asked Johnny to join just because Johnny was thumbing through the book. And he's like, this is going to be a great interview. Yeah. This is going to be a great interview. <laughs> I'm like, well, why don't you come and sit down on it? Yeah. Well, well, Mark can't do a show alone. It's too oh, much. Oh, he it's can. Much he can. Like, we good. always we produce we, together, we, but we, we, we can we run this, solo. You know? Mark is Mark is just he, Usually Mark's Stogie awesome, Geeks is a two-man production job, yep. uh, a full team effort outside of that with, with Samantha, our director of operations, yep. Studio and, Mom. And, 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 and myself and Johnny and Mark. You're and all, all great. You're all and, great. And all that Thank stuff. You. But it's just like it's 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 – Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. She doesn't have her it's glasses Sam. on. It's not Samantha. When, she, when, when, it's, uh, when she's got her glasses on, it's Samantha. But right, right. She's Sam. You know, but she's but Sam. but it's one of those things where it's like you know Johnny was asking so many questions. Well, you know he's such a fascinating guy. We should. Uh, I'm like, dude, just come on the show. It'll be great. <laughs> you know what I mean? So so hats off to uh, Mark and Sam for producing the show because it is a two person yeah. job yep. to produce this. Even though it looks like organized chaos to the listeners, it's not <laughs> for sure. There's a, there's a lot of effort of getting people yeah. on Zoom to, to come on and, 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 and do the show. Now, my final question for you, okay? Okay, Joe. My final question for you is who have you met in the industry that you have had a lesson because I believe that even here on Story Geeks, as a host, it's a lesson for me to learn, right? It's a lesson for me to learn to move forward on my journey, right? It's a lesson for Drew and Jeff to come on and, 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 and to participate in the show. Johnny, ever who have you met when you were writing your book? Any edition, pick one, doesn't matter, right? Who have you met that have kind of taught you kind of like a personal life lesson? Uh, you send it to the lawyer. Well, that's that's uh, that's interesting because so many people have taught me so much. Sure. Um, and I don't know if there was a one person. Mm-hmm. I know um, Carlito Fuente, who I've known, you know, like I said, at least 30 years before all this happened. Uh, he was one of the first guys who just said he knew was uh, he knew I was writing a book. That's all he knew. It's not, you know, he said, come on down. I went down to the DR. He took me around. He drove me to all the fields. Uh, Chateau del Fuente was just not even starting. I don't even think he thought of it yet. Took me to his factory, gave me free reign, his factory. I, I went around. I talked to people. I picked up the leaves. I looked at everything. Uh, he, he, would just, he couldn't do enough for me. He was just really, really, really great. And of course, then I met his dad, and his dad and I hit it off. And, um, and then we decided, gee, we both like to drink and stay up late at night. So, we, you know, oh, boy. <laughs> uh, I love it. I mean, <laughs> I mean come on. So, you know, and cigars. So that happened. And then I, um, General Cigar, he's retired now, but uh, Benji Menendez. Oh, yeah. Who comes from comes from a Cuban family. Yeah. Yep. They uh, actually have cigars named after him as well. Yeah, for sure. That's exactly yep. right. Um, yeah, the Mike uh, Giannini is doing it, uh, doing a Menendez cigar. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Benji was another guy, just took me around, uh, introduced me to everybody, went down to the General Cigar, which is a huge factory, their warehouse. Um I mean, you know, L.A. could solve their homeless problem by putting all those people in the General Cigar warehouses because they're that <laughs> big, just giant. They have all these great tobaccos. And Benji was, was, was really good because not only did he show me around, but, he, you know, I asked a lot of questions. That's how you learn. Yeah, sure. Uh, and, boy, he just uh, answered everything, just answered everything. And at the end of the day, he, he was tired. He said, Let's have dinner where you can talk some more. And we did. And um, and that's actually where I learned a lot of things is 
after hours. Same thing with the spirits book. Um, I go to Scotland like two or three times a year. People say, why do you keep going back? I said, every time I go there, I learn something new. Mm. I'll be having drinks with the barrel maker, the cooper, or I'll be talking to the distiller after hours. Or, and they'll just say something. They'll just drop something. Wow, I didn't know that. So I write it down and uh, make a note. And that's, that's how you learn. That's, anyhow, so, you know, one nice thing about the cigar industry, uh, Joe, and, and, you know, you kind of brought up a good point without bringing it up, is that the people are so open and mm. so willing to share. Um, there's, yeah, there's friendly competition, of course, but no one's going to stab anybody in the back. I'm not the good guys. They're all going to help everybody because, you know, we're all in this thing together. Yeah. And uh, they help one another. They help one another. All right. Absolutely. That was, that's that's awesome. actually well well put. Um awesome. for sure. I cannot wait for our second interview. Yeah. Where Thank you. Me too. Where, where we expand. I now have your home phone number. So All right. <laughs> yep. So, you know, and I know I can call late at night cuz you're up. Yep. So, it, I was behind. Yeah. You know. so, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> um one quick question. I was told to ask about Big Blue. Big your, Blue? Your suitcase. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, t- talk to me. Talk to me about Big Blue. You were in Croatia. No, right? I was in I was in France actually. Okay. I was- I was in France. Is France close to Croatia? I'm not a G. Yeah. Uh, it's Europe. Uh, yeah. I, think, right. I, think it's, I think it's Europe. It's across the pond. Talk to you know me. I mean? Take us it's through. Summer, take the, summer's in the, glo- in the globe. Take me Anyhow. through the 20-year journey of you and Big Blue. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not that great a story. It's a but great basically. story. I love it. I love I mean, it. I've been saving it for this whole I, time. I haven't told it yet. Okay, so I'm, Coming off, the, I'm, I'm actually, my, my final destination is Cognac. Okay, I'm going to Cognac to go through one of the uh, distilleries. I'm sorry. And, I'm sorry. It was Cognac. It wasn't Croatia. It was Cognac. There you go. I heard it. All right. A little, it was, a little it bit was, of a it difference. A, it's a C word. <laughs> <laughs> it's a C word, yeah. Right, right. yeah it, was right. it was Cognac. It was Cognac. So yeah, I like I do not travel light. Here. I do not travel light. <laughs> I take anything I think I could possibly need and I cram it into what I had is a huge big black suitcase. Did you take like the quill that. pen? And I, no, no, I left that at home right. because I actually had a bird that I took with me. I got a past <laughs> customs. And, uh, <laughs> I had fresh quills, you know, whatever I wanted them, uh, but. So anyway, so I, everything packed in this huge, giant, black uh, Samsonite suitcase, I think it was. I probably shouldn't mention the name, but that what it is what it is. That's all right. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so, you know, you, you pass customs, and now you're waiting for your luggage to come through so you can go through the final customs check, okay? So here comes my suitcase, and pow, it hits a little ridge in that little off-ramp. Boom, pops open. Everything flies out of there. I, my cigars, my lighter, my shorts, my socks, my shirts, you know. Underwear. Uh, my my under, <laughs> underwear all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it's all over. So everybody is there looking for their suitcases, and they see my stuff. And they go, oh, socks. They, there's a Batman sock, and there's a, you know, a white T-shirt, and a bird. A bird. There's, there's a, a bird. bird. There's a live bird. There's a, there's a part of a bird. Anyhow. <laughs> The suitcase is split, like totally open, useless. So I gotta go through customs yeah, yeah. with the stuff. <laughs> I look like a homeless guy. I take all my stuff. And I got a little paper bag. I shoved it in there. I go through customs, <laughs> and the guy's looking at me, and he says, "What are you doing?" Well, my suitcase is back there, some pieces. Anyhow, so I checked in my hotel. I got, I, said, I got a. You know, eventually fly back out of here. I'm like, I can't carry this stuff in a paper bag. And this is before 9 11, anyhow. So, so uh, we had like a, a half an hour, no, half a day uh, in cognac to do some sightseeing. And they had a tour all arranged for me. And I said, you know, I'm sorry, I can't go on sightseeing tour. I, I've got to buy this. I got to buy this. I got to meet Big Blue. <laughs> and that's where I met Big Blue. The only suitcase in Cognac is, by the way, if you're going to buy a, uh, a suitcase, don't go to Cognac. Lousy selection. 
lousy selection. <laughs> the only I go to this luggage store, and they all look like little sissy. You know, they got like the Happy Kitty on them. They have this crazy you know, <laughs> Happy Kitty. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't carry that. So there in the corner was Big Blue, ugliest damn suitcase you ever saw. Meanwhile, it's 23 years later. But go on. Injection molded plastic, blue, and not even a great shade of blue. You know, there's navy blue, there's teal. This is like an ugly. I said, I'll take it. And I got this thing back to my hotel room. It was big. I got stuff in there. I got all my clothes in there. I got uh, some of the bedspread in there. I got some extra towels I got to take home. I got to shove a lot of good stuff in the suitcase. They didn't know I was taking. Um, I would take light bulbs, but they use a different system in France. <laughs> right, uh, right, right. <laughs> you know. and, uh, and then you know, I uh, closed it up, took it home on the thing. And uh, brought her in the house. The first thing my wife says, what's that? (laughs) (laughs) And I'm happy to say I have never taken it on another trip again. (laughs) But wasn't is isn't Big Blue like 20 years old? Yeah, at least. Yeah, (laughs) at least I was told 23 years old. It could be 23. Yeah, I've heard a lot. I've heard a lot. As old as I am. Yeah. (laughs) If I had more time. And if I had another cigar where I didn't have to get up, I could tell more stories and ask you more questions. <laughs> well, so we're we're going we're to say it. that's part two. That's part two. That's part two. Um, that's part two. That's part two. Like, uh, when, to be continued. Dot, dot, dot. All when, right. <laughs> when I heard about Big Blue, I honestly, it, it really brought tears to my eyes. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I, I heard about Big Blue Yes, Wait, today's Friday. So yesterday. Because I was telling uh, Lauren um, the uh, that you're able to come on and all that stuff, and and she goes, "Let me tell you about Big Blue." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and, and she gave She's me some gone. other stuff too. She gave me some other stuff there. too, right? Because <laughs> apparently you guys love to travel together, and you guys do some awesome things, and you guys explore and go out there and see. And I think that that that, that is awesome. But uh, Big Blue, um, I think that that's a great story. You know, I still have it here. If you want it, Joe, okay, I can, can you do me? All right, send now, it over. Now I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a homework assignment, right? If you could take, right. a, take a picture. Okay. Don't mail it to me. Try to take a picture on <laughs> yeah. like your iPad. Oh. I know you have an iPad. Yeah, don't send I a carrier iPad. pigeon. Take a picture of Big Blue, and uh, email it to me. You have my email or Johnny, whichever one yeah, you want to respond to. Okay. Have Joan, who's a Saint Joan. She is Saint Joan. <laughs> have that's why they call her Saint Joan. She have, lives with me. Have her <laughs> do the attachment, and I will post on our Stogie Geeks social media and website a picture of Big Blue. Can I can I accessorize it with some of my underwear and my socks? <laughs> Absolutely. <and> the- <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, if you want to, if you want to do that, all the better. All the better. I know the Story Geeks listeners would totally. I, I know oh, yeah. that the ones yep. who are going to get a chance to listen to this Monday, right? Yep. When it gets posted and, and, and stuff like that, they are going to be. I am going to get email at Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. I'm going to get email saying you have got to bring Richard back on because oh, thank you. just yeah. having you here, it's been a privilege and an honor. So thank yeah. you very much for your time. Thank you very My much pleasure. for your patience yeah. as far as the, the technological hurdles that we had to jump <laughs> through to get you on here, right? Uh, therefore. Uh, well, I've, I've got my solution, my, my my fix-it thing. I don't know if you're going to – this is, is going to be my, uh, my lunch, Actually, I think. We, 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 we have that as well, Mark. Ah. You, uh, we, we have that as well here. Yeah. We didn't even get the chance to touch – this yeah. now, I'd be lying to tell you that this bottle is gonna last till till the next time you appear on on Story right. Geeks. Even if it was next week, it wouldn't last <laughs> <laughs> because we we do do uh, seven other shows in cybersecurity, yep. like I said, and whatnot. But however, um, I I know where where I can get some more. I also want to take thank thank take 
Oh my god. T- take a time this to thank. This stuff is great. I also <laughs> want to thank <laughs> Drew. Yeah. yeah. I want to yeah. thank Drew and Jeff yeah. for this long episode. By the way, Drew and Jeff, I remember when I was talking to Drew. I said, Oh yeah, Story Geeks episode, they're short and tight now. Yeah. Short. <laughs> Today is an exception <laughs> to the rule. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? <laughs> However, uh Jeff and Drew, I wanna thank you guys for appearing on Story Geeks. Yeah, thanks guys. Absolutely. Richard, I wanna thank you. I wanna invite all of you back. We're gonna have an awesome conversation. Johnny co pilot, yeah. thank you for oh, yeah. for all of the audio work that you do behind the scenes. Thank you. He's, he can't be on every episode. Yeah. But your book was so intriguing, he had uh, to be here. Had to be here. For oh, sure. thank you. I'm honored. You yeah, know what I mean? Of course. So, thank you. Stogie Geeks. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Stogie Geeks. Listen, I can do the outro. You no, are. no. I have to do the outro. Do I'm you? the host. I'm the host. You know what I mean? The host... The host has to do the outro because that's how we get paid, right? No more. <laughs> Stogie Geeks listeners, Johnny's going to take you to the yeah. outro. Hey, All right. thank you for joining Stogie Geeks. Everybody, thank you. We'll see you next time. Take care.